Welcome. Today we're going to talk about how I went from under 50 followers to over 170,000 followers in less than two weeks. What I've been thinking about since uh, I did these last couple series about the music industry, which will carry us directly into whether or not we're in the middle of a spiritual intergalactic warfare with actual aliens. All of this and more. I'm your host, Tyler McCullough, and you are listening to the Questionable Thoughts Podcast. So, oh, oops. So you can hear my voice, and it sounds a lot better. I think it's because I got these sweet headphones on, but... I decided to do a podcast because this is more up my alley as far as, you know, being able to get deep into concepts and not have to talk for only a minute or 10 minutes. I can kind of just let my thoughts ramble. You know, I like to get deep into stuff and and actually have a conversation rather than just, you know, get hype for a little bit of time and try to cover a bunch of stuff in a short period of time because it's kind of hard. That is one of the hardest things to do is break a complex concept down into simple terms. So maybe I can kind of get around that through a podcast. We can kind of discuss some insane ideas. And I named it Questionable Thoughts because I'm, I've, I've been called a thought most of my life. And um, now I can actually express my thoughtness through a microphone and a camera and actually have people listening. Because I will tell you, I have tried to get on social media and have people listen to me plenty of times and um, done a lot of failing at that, but I never quit. And uh, I finally was able to crack the freaking code, which kind of blew my mind. I mean, like, I've always tried to do this kind of thing, you know, like not get famous on social media because I don't give a shit about the whole famous thing, but I kind of just want to have a platform where my thoughts are heard. Right. And, um, I've never been able to do it until now. And it's so exciting. And I mean, I'm not really talking about what I've tried to talk about in uh, the past, which may be a reason why it worked this time because I continued to change the approach and I'm going to go into how this whole thing happened, where I literally went from under 50 followers to over 170,000 followers in less than two weeks. Kind of, it's just mind blowing. But I was just being myself. You know, I, I um, it's funny because I actually came up with the theory that, that led me to that 170,000. I actually came up with that when I was in high school. And I actually, this kind of shows how much of a nerd I am. I actually sent a letter to the weekend Abel himself and I put a pentagram on the front of the envelope so that he'd be like, what is this? And like, and read it. Right. Never heard anything back from him, but I, it was basically me just asking him. And at that point, only the first uh, three were, were out like after hours. Um, Starboy wasn't out yet. It was just the beauty behind the madness. And I think it was like 2015 or maybe, maybe 20, I think it was 2015. And, um, and I figured it out then, and I'm, and then I kind of just, the, per, the perfect storm arrived, you know, because uh, he, he was doing the Super Bowl, and I knew that the Super Bowl was going to be a big thing. So what I did is I'm like, okay, I've been seeing all of his music videos nowadays, and you can tell that they're just, it's a giant story. One goes to the next and goes to the next and goes to the next, and you have to watch them in a specific order in a row to actually understand the story. And it's always been like that from the beginning with him. So... I'm like, well, let me just go ahead and share what I learned about Beauty Behind the Madness when I sent in that letter because I I showed my mom that I I would show all, all the people you know that I hung out with um, that little uh, series of videos, and so um, I just posted that on on TikTok, and you know I posted it in like the 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 early afternoon. Um, and what happened is it didn't really get much traction. And then I used the Super Bowl halftime hashtag. And right at halftime, it blew up. 
like literally freaking massive, like thousands of people viewing it per freaking minute and just massive comments, massive followers. And literally I only made, I think I made like four that day. And so what happened is I'm like, holy shit, people want more. And people are like, give me part five, give me part five, part five. So I'm like, holy shit, this is crazy. And it, it started, it, it hit a million views and I got 10,000 followers in a night. And I'm like, what is going on, dude? Like you don't, you don't get organic reach like that anywhere. And I don't care what app it is that TikTok is the only spot that you can get followers that fast and views that fast. And it went viral, dude. And it has 3.3 million views at this point. And it's just crazy to me. Like that takes so long to get that many views anywhere else. And I got that. That was my, like my first one that went viral. 3.3 million views it blew my mind. And uh, I just continued making the story, continued following it. And, uh, you know, coming up with concepts that made sense with what it was, what the storyline was following. And, and boom, now we're here. And I, I've, I started a new one. I already finished it. Um, I did uh, Billie Eilish. Cause she's evil as shit. She's just like all up in that demon shit, you know? So, um, I showed some of her music videos and people are loving it, man. It's freaking cool. Um, exposing the music industry for what it really is. It's, it's, it's evil, man. And I, I think, you know, a, a lot of, I've been thinking a lot after I did these because honestly, um, the fact that these people literally worship Satan and, and worship Saturn, which which is weird, right? And then there's this whole like, like it got me thinking about religion and and, you know, and what they worship, why they worship it. And and really just like about. Um, I, I guess just religion and and gods and stuff like that. And I'm thinking and I'm like, OK, well these people are getting massive amounts of power from this power. So if that's real, then the opposite has to be real. Right. But then I'm thinking, wait a second. And this actually happened from a comment. She commented and she said that and cause, cause what happens is, is in one of the music videos, which is like the, the beginning of the, the evilness is she drinks a glass of like black shit, which at the time I was like, okay, this is the same concept of Indiana Jones when Indiana when Indy drinks the the blood of Kali Ma, right? What, what, the, it's just a metaphor for drinking the sauce. Okay, so he drinks this sauce and literally falls under the spell and gets and gets hypnotized and like becomes a minion of this evil spirit. Okay, and he doesn't give a shit about his girl anymore the the little the little kid who he, who what's his name i don't know his name forgot but this cute little asian kid um doesn't care about them anymore he actually like slaps the little kid because he's so you know brainwashed by this stuff that he drank and he's literally overcome by a spirit and so i'm thinking holy shit that's the same exact thing that goes on in, in the music industry is these people they take these innocent people they make them drink this sauce and then they get indoctrinated into their evil agenda and they they fully believe it and they they don't have any remorse because they're literally under the spell of a spirit. And so that's what I originally thought. Right. And this could still make sense. It still makes sense. Right. It could it could be the same thing as what I'm about to say. Just add you could add this to it. Right. And so. This woman commented on my TikTok and she said, have you ever heard of the black goo? And I don't, I don't even know what the hell black goo is. It sounds hilarious. And so I look it up and it has to do with the movie Prometheus, which is all about aliens. And I've seen the movie before. It's a freaking kick-ass movie. And so I do a little bit more research on the black goo and they use it to exterminate races on like, like an entire species from planets, Right. It, it's I have I have this article here that I'll read. The black goo is chemical AO three nine five nine X dot nine one and referred to colloquially as the black goo or black liquid. Right. Which is what she drank. She drank a she drank a glass of black liquid. 
and it started coming out of her eyes. Okay. And it was, it was, it was creepy. And so let's see, is, is, is this black liquid is an extremely potent, virulent, mutagenic pathogen composed of millions of small microorganisms that was manufactured by the engineers. Now the engineers are the creators of man. They are the creators of the life on earth. They came to earth and what happened is one of the engineers sacrificed himself, drank the black liquid, and then fell into the river and expanded life all over the planet by flowing the life through the river and it and it basically the life infected the planet. Okay. It was basically Jesus as an alien. Kind of crazy. Which I mean I've been I've been researching a lot about this alien stuff. I'm not gonna talk about I'm not gonna talk about in depth, but the Bible is basically talking about aliens and it's crazy. Okay. But that we're not gonna talk about that one in here. Okay, we're going to talk about that one maybe next time or on a different episode because that's going to be a long one. All right, so both to create life forms and act as a biological weapon, basically to exterminate populations or an, an entire human race, right? Due to its volatile nature at ambient temperature, the engineers house the pathogen within satellite or, sorry, um, steatite amp- ampules. Amply, it was whatever the word is. They stored them in containers that they had to stay temperature regulated at. Okay. They basically worshipped this black goo because it is what created life for them. Okay. And they found out what it is. And it's basically this this liquid with incredibly dense microorganisms in them and, and basically is, is life. It can create life. So if you think about it, it's bit, it's okay. So you know how we create white goo, like as humans, like I and the rest of the dudes out here are creating white goo. What if aliens create black goo and they're just infecting humans like Billie Eilish with their black goo and possessing them? Okay, that's that's a little that's a little it's a little different of a theory. I, I, I didn't think about that until now. What I did think about is the fact that it's alien shit. This is the, like this is actual alien technology that they're talking about in this movie and and movies aren't always fake. A- most of the time, movies are actually hinting at what is going on in re- in your reality that you don't know about and they put it in movies so that they tell you but you think it's a, it's just a joke and it's just a movie, so you don't actually believe that it's what's real. Like in Indiana Jones, right? You'd think it's just a movie because, you know, it's Steven Spielberg and he's a Hollywood director. But in reality, are they just are they telling you what's going on with the kids in cages underground? Like, that's probably fucking real. You know, like if you've done if you've done your research over this <laughs> over this time. That, that that it's it's a movement. Hashtag save the children, bro. Eight hundred thousand children go missing every year in the world, and you're worried about four hundred thousand coronavirus deaths. When in reality, the same amount of people have died on the world. The only difference is the heart disease went down, cancer went down, flu flu deaths are basically at, at an all at, at zero right now. And coronavirus deaths have have gone up in the exact proportion that the others went down. That's a little strange. But nobody's talking about the 800,000 children that go missing every year. Anyways, that could be a different episode. But alien shit. This is alien stuff. But we could literally be infiltrated by extraterrestrials on the earth. And that is what is evil. Is it's an evil race of aliens that want to exterminate humans off the earth. Like, is, is that is that too far fetched? I mean, do you believe in aliens? If you don't believe in aliens, come on, bro. We're not the only freaking life form out here. We're stupid compared to how much opportunity for intelligence there is in in life. I mean, literally, like the universe is. Uh, is limitless 
Like, I don't even think that there's a number of, it's, it's, in, it's infinite. The universe is infinite. There's no way in hell that we are the only form of life in the universe. I don't even give a shit. Sorry, it ain't happening. There's there's no way. So, what if aliens came down here without us seeing or without the people who saw reporting that they saw or the government contacting them and having them come down here and didn't tell us about it because why would they tell us about it? We'd freak out and ruin everything. And they're actually the ones that are controlling our governments and the industries that influence the world the most. And they're using it against us to watch us kill each other and destroy our own society by ourselves. They just influence, and with their influence, we kill ourselves. Would that not be the most entertaining thing ever if you're a freaking alien? I feel like they love it because they're evil. It's a, it's, a de- it's a race of demonic aliens. And the earth is probably a god. Right? What if Satan? I mean, think I mean, think about it, dude. Reptilians? Like with when the weekend turned into a reptilian, right? After he licked the frog. The frog could have been a metaphor for the freaking liquid that Billy drank. And then he turned into a goddamn reptilian. It infects their bodies, and maybe they become the alien race. It's the destroyer of races, right? What if it's like an, an impregnation of your of your freaking soul? Or it basically creates a new life inside of you. And now you have a split personality where half of you is a freaking alien demon and the other half is, is regular. I, no one knows other than the people who know. And that's not me. I don't know. But I am questioning things. And that's what this is about. It's questionable thoughts. But if there is a race of demonic aliens out here that worship Saturn because it's space and if anything and 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 they're aliens. Right. And so the aliens probably came down and introduced the humans to Satanism and how powerful Satan is because they worship Saturn and Satan lives on Saturn or whatever because they're aliens and they can do intergalactic freaking travel and they came from Saturn and Saturn is the evil planet. And these aliens came down and said, you can have all the power that you want as long as you worship Saturn. And so the people worship Saturn, get the power from that. And then they also literally drink demon semen, alien, alien jizz, black goo, and then become reptiles. Like, dude, it makes sense. Okay. And also, right with the alien stuff, I then... Got a message from a dude, which is cool. I love the internet because I started making these and people are messaging me and stuff. And so I got a message from this one dude and he told me to watch Daft Punk. This music, this movie, which is basically just a giant movie of music videos by Daft Punk. And maybe I'll do a whole video like uncovering what it means, right? I could do like a little movie review, but... It's Interstellar 5555. It's basically about how it's basically Daft Punk's story. Right? So what it, it's it's about this a, this this alien music group who's on a different planet and they get kidnapped from their planet and get taken to Earth and are controlled and like brainwashed by a giant producer in Hollywood that is a that literally does satanic rituals and is just making a bunch of money off of the extraterrestrial music that they're making because they literally are like way better at music than humans are. And so he brings this alien music down to earth, makes a ton of money off of it, and then st- and then tries to sacrifice them to Satan in a giant ritual where they have all these freaking golden records. It's crazy, dude. And what he's saying they do is they take aliens bring them to earth to make music for them and then they sacrifice the aliens and their and their power to satan and then they become gods themselves that's basically what this music video by daft punk says and i feel like daft punk is pretty knowledgeable about the music industry 
And I mean, I don't doubt it, dude. I do not doubt that we are being infiltrated by aliens at all. I mean, dude, we know nothing. They're not going to tell us anything about aliens. If they told us stuff about aliens, we would go absolutely crazy. Which I think they, and like, at this point, if they had told us when it was happening, cool. We would have been fine with it because we would have gradually gained knowledge. But now at this point, it's gone on for so long to where the secret has gotten so big that if they were to expose and, and or like disclose what's been going on for so long, all of our minds would just explode. They would just blow up in our faces and we would literally just become brain fried. Like our minds would become soup because there's that the, the secrets are that big. And we're talking about aliens literally living among us, demon aliens fighting against good aliens on Earth right now. And like this like intergalactic war of like, should we exterminate the humans? Should we, you know, save them? Should we give them the opportunity to save themselves? Let's see how smart they are. Let's see if they fall into these traps. And just they're just if we're an experiment and these aliens are literally just watching us and seeing what we do with these things that they throw at us like coronavirus and like these these this evil agenda that's been put in place for so long seeing if we can get out of it it's just like a giant we're like an ant farm like you know how you had those little ant farms in your room when you were a kid maybe you had one maybe maybe you didn't but you know what i'm talking about right and so there's just aliens literally watching us like a tv show we're probably a little a little reality tv show for these aliens just to watch and laugh at. And that's why they do all these giant rituals in front of the whole population. And so these aliens can be like, whoa, they don't even understand what they're doing, but they're literally worshiping Saturn and they're worshiping us right now. And these humans have no freaking clue because they're stupid. And they're just making fun of us. And there's the ones that control it right now are the evil ones, which is why there's so much crazy shit going on in 2020 and why so much shit is being exposed because now they don't think that anyone can touch them because they just won, right? But I feel like this is the age of awakening. This is the moment where we could actually start to wake up to all of what's going on. Maybe we'll actually understand that there is aliens out here controlling us and we won't be too afraid. And maybe the good dudes will come back. The good aliens will come and and check up on us and see that there's these evil day aliens and maybe there will be an actual alien war on the planet. Can you imagine watching an alien war on Earth as a human? That would be so cool. Like, I hope I wouldn't die. But if like I do die in the middle of an alien war, at least I can die in the middle of an alien war. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would have never expected that. Like when I would think like, oh, I wonder how I'm going to die. Oh, probably heart disease. You know, that's what most people think. But no, I died in the middle of an alien war. Intergalactic warfare. That's how I went out. That's cool, dude. What a cool way to go out. I mean, that or like or like a, eaten by a pack of wolves or something. I don't know. Everybody's going to die, but who knows how you're going to die. I wonder. I don't know. I doubt I'm going to live till I'm 80. I feel like the or like I feel like there's going to be some crazy shit that happens that kills us all before then. I don't know. We'll see. But but I mean, dude, I've been doing a lot of research after I've kind of like thought about aliens and stuff and how aliens could easily just be kicking it on here and are the ones that control us. And the more I look for this stuff, it could just be confirmation bias, you know, but the more I look for this kind of stuff that proves that like, you know, the Bible is about aliens and how aliens are actually the ones who like created earth and civilization or like actually, you know, came down to assist us in creating and creating math and the banking system and science and all these on all these things that have evolved us into where we are today. You know, like aliens had to had aliens played a part in our evolution, you know, and I, I don't think that. God is an alien. I think that God is, you know, 
infinite intelligence. It's all around us. It is everything, you know, there's no label. It's not a he, it's not a she. It's just, it just is. God just is infinite. And is the creation energy that created itself, right? It's just like, there's no way to actually explain it because it is unexplainable. But I do think that the, you know, beings that are in the Bible that are represented as God are actually aliens. And based based on what I've been listening to for the past day. So I I wouldn't I wouldn't take everything that I'm saying and and put it in a book and 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 like actually take it take it to heart. But what I've been what I've been hearing is like a lot about how the 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 representation of God in the Bible are actually extraterrestrial beings who came down to assist with the um, building of civilization and and the actual, you know, construction of Earth. Which is crazy because it's so misinterpreted to where, you know, it and, and there's been there was a lot of there's genocide and and what is represented as God is actually aliens. So when you take acts of the aliens that aren't actually God and represent them as God, you get a, a distorted image on, in your mind of God as some like, you know, morbid kind of create uh, morbid kind of being, you know, maybe like a, like this guy uh, said that it was kind of like, like a drunk, abusive father. Right. And it's like if you if you put that image of God in a, in a, in the heads of people, it's it's very easy to control them. It's very easy to manipulate people and and be and, and have the religion be run by fear mongering and that kind of stuff. When you create an image of God by, you know, misinterpreting the scriptures to represent something that it isn't. And it's it, when you translate it in the wrong way, it can easily become that. But the way that this, the way that people are translating the Bible is actually, you know, when when it when you relate it to extra extraterrestrial beings and UFOs and and different things like that, it makes it makes more sense that aliens came down and assisted us with our evolution as humans on this earth. But that's a story for another time and also when I get more educated on it because uh, I just started researching it today. So you think about aliens, if they're real and you look up in the sky and say, wow, I wonder if aliens are real. Dude, they're 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 living among us, dog. They, they've been kicking it here on Earth. I think that there's de- there, there's there's demonic aliens that probably live underground. I've heard some horrifying stories and theories about aliens literally being here and eating children underground, which has more to do with those 800,000 kids that go missing every year. I don't have any facts to prove that, but you know, that's a, that's a thing. And it's in it. And it's like, uh, I don't want to believe that because I don't want to believe that there's literally an alien race living underground that could be considered hell, which was in the Bible and that they're just feasting on on humans and and are in control of the world and that's why the world is so evil is because the ones that are down below that you can't see are the ones that are controlling everything when you look at the past scriptures and and writings it actually says that the governors were originally extraterrestrials they were not human and then once the once the non-humans governed to kind of lay the foundation of government, then they handed it down to the humans and then the humans controlled. And so basically what it's saying is that non-humans create government and then they pass them down. So we could be literally living in a world that is governed by 
demonic beings that live underground that are considered gods because they are extraterrestrial beings, right? Which is scary to think about. But I have no facts to back that. It's just, it's just questionable thoughts. All right. And that's what we do out here. We question everything. But I thought it was incredibly interesting that the most, one of the most popular musicians right now is Billie Eilish with the younger crowd. I mean, she's getting like billions of views on her stuff. And the one who did that is referencing drinking a glass of black goo and then having it come out of her face. Like in the movie, you drink the black goo and it literally starts coming out of your eyes. Like that is literally in Prometheus is the liquid starts infecting and and like the beings you get like infected with a parasite, right? And it comes out in your eye. And that is exactly what she kind of, showed in her music video when she drank that cup. And I'm like, okay, well, obviously like she didn't write the, that, that music video, like she doesn't write her music videos. She she doesn't direct her music videos. She's not putting on demon wings and walking out of a puddle of what could be called black goo or oil. Right. That's just not like she doesn't do that. She's being told to do that or being a puppet. And she's just put in these things and just says, do this like they're telling us what actually goes on without actually telling us what's going on. You have to actually critically think. And they they've literally trained us to not do that. Like they don't want us to be critical thinkers. They want us to be dumbed down. They want us to just follow exactly in line of what of the agenda that they want us to live in. And they want us to, you know, just be docile little sheep. This is a show where we critically think. It's all about questionable thoughts. I think that the black liquid had a lot to do with the black goo that was in Prometheus. And the black goo that was in Prometheus was literally basically a an AI liquid that had incredi- it was incredibly dense with microorganisms, which was basically the recipe for life. And if she's referencing drinking a liquid that and that basically indoctrinated her into the Illuminati and that liquid is is connected to aliens and an alien liquid that can infect you with a parasite and then basically change your DNA and turn you into something else. And then she went from being an innocent little girl into being a demonic puppet. Is that all connected together? And the beginning of the story starts with an alien race coming to earth, bringing this liquid that can transform humans into hosts for their parasite. And when you infect them with their parasite, that you then control them with your alien technologies if you can connect all of those dots, then they could easily be telling us what's actually going on. But there's no facts to back it. And the aliens that actually run and are on this earth right now are evil. And so obviously when they infect humans with a parasite, that contains life and they can control the life that they infect the body, the host with the parasite, then they use it for evil. And you look at Billie Eilish's music in her music videos and they're using that for evil because they want to control the earth with evil. But at the same time, there's going to be a polar opposite of the evil aliens. That means there has to be good aliens that are going to save us too. And so where are they at? Where are they at? Are they coming? Are they here? Are aliens real? Are they going to save us? You think we're going to see aliens coming up soon? I would love to hear about it. I would love to hear your opinion on all of these topics and whether you think aliens are real and if they're coming to help us out, to help us fight this, what I'm going to have to call an intergalactic spiritual war. 
that we're fighting right now. And it's humans against aliens at the moment. Hopefully we'll have some good aliens come down. It'll be alien, aliens against aliens and we'll get to watch it. But we'll see. Or And, and how long do you think it's going to be until it gets exposed as aliens are here? I'd love to hear about it. That was it for this episode of Questionable Thoughts, episode one. Thank you so much for listening. I greatly appreciate you. And uh, I will see you on the next episode where we will talk about all kinds of questionable thoughts. Catch you later. Hope you enjoyed it.